Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rain, and today we're going to talk about how much it costs each month to live in China's most expensive city, Shanghai. We're going to talk about housing, utilities, entertainment, transportation, food, and because we're all well-rounded individuals on this channel, I'm going to throw in the costs of hobbies such as going to the gym, dance classes, music, whatever you're into. I've been living in China for almost five years now, since 2017, and I've definitely seen how the cost of living has gone up. We're going to start with your biggest cost, and that is housing. There are three different types of housing that you can consider here in China. First, you have a modern high-rise building, as the name suggests. These are newer buildings that have elevators. Then you have the common houses. Common houses, I think, are about 30 years old. They do not have an elevator. It usually has five or six floors. The third type of housing is a lane house. Lane houses are a lot more traditional and a lot older. They also have about four to six flights. I've lived in two of these types of houses, but I've seen all three types throughout my time looking at apartments with real estate agents. High rise is gonna be more expensive, a common house a little bit cheaper, and a lane house a little bit cheaper depending on the location. If you're sharing an apartment, it's gonna be significantly cheaper than if you're renting the whole place yourself or if it's a single apartment. So my first three years in China, I lived in a cute little high-rise building close to the city center. There's an apartment tour somewhere on my channel if you wanna check that out. I was paying 3,500 a month. 3,500 is what you'd expect what, what I paid for a master and I think now the prices are similar. I would say 35 to 4500 for a master bedroom in a shared apartment in or near downtown. The next place I lived was a lane house. I didn't really enjoy it, but I lived in one of those for a total of three days and it was 6500 That accommodation was not shared. It was my own little cute studio, but I did not like living there at all and I ended up losing my deposit, canceling my contract. So I, lo I lost a lot of money, but Happiness is way more important. And my current apartment is actually in the same neighborhood as that lane house. It's still in the city center, amazing location. I live in a high-rise building in a studio apartment and I pay 6,800 now. I would say it's 50 square meters, but I think it's like 25, it's really small. I asked my landlord how many square meters it is and he said 50 and I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I have friends who are paying 7,800. I have friends with three bedrooms who are paying 25,000. So there is quite a range, but I think for a single person, you can expect to pay somewhere around 7,000 in the city center. And I would say four to 5,000 on the outskirts for your own place. Next, let's talk about utilities. Utilities are pretty inexpensive in my opinion. For internet connection at home, Wi-Fi, I pay 150 a month. So the initial setup fee was like 300. I think I pay like 300 quai for that. And then each month on my phone, I pay like 150. For my phone service or my phone plan, I have, um, I think 20 gigabytes. I'm so sorry, I sound so stupid. I have 20, it's gigabytes, right? <laughs> and megabytes. I have 20 of the things that we all have every month that gives us internet, that magical thing that I cannot remember the name of. But yeah, I have a typical Chinese phone plan. It's not an international plan. That's the only negative part about it. I pay 100 by a month, which is 15 American dollars. I wanna switch to an international plan because I, I need to start calling my grandparents because they're not on this WhatsApp thing. Like I need to actually call them. Next is electricity. I've never paid more than 250 to 300 RMB each month and that just depends like if it's that in between season like spring and fall where you don't really need any heating or cooling it's a lot cheaper and you know in winter and summer you're using a lot more energy so it's going to be a little bit more expensive another thing this is very specific to me but I do have a storage unit I really hope you can't hear the construction happening outside I'm really sorry if you can but yeah I have a storage unit I pay a hundred and five quai each month for that 
so that is about what 15 15 dollars and I have it because I just have like lights that I use for filming and when I have my winter clothes stored away it's really good to just have it there it's just a basic one meter square unit that I use to keep my extra suitcase my lighting my comforters and winter clothes and I also have an IE an IE is someone who comes to clean your apartment so she comes once a week and I pay her a hundred ply each time she comes for two hours so some months it'll be 400 depending on how many weeks are in the month some months it'll be 500 all right next up transportation transportation is one that definitely depends on your lifestyle and your job if your job is close to the metro you're you're good as gold if your job is far away from the metro you're gonna incur some additional costs to get there which is what I'm experiencing now and it's frustrating <laughs> So let's talk about the metro first. I enjoy taking the metro. I think they have a really good metro system here in Shanghai. And I actually, I'm, this is one thing I'm definitely going to miss when I leave. One metro ride is around three to I think six quai, depending on how far out you're going. And that is literally cents. Each month I put about 200 or 300 quai on my card and I've never run out. One cool thing is that if you take public taxis, you can also pay for those taxis with your metro card. Second to that are DDs. DDs are where the costs can add up pretty quickly. So now at my new job, unfortunately, it's really far from the metro. It's about a 30 to 40 minute walk. So the two ways I get around are the metro and DD. So I'm going to put that all together as 1,500 quai because on nights out, I do use the DD. If I'm running late for any appointments on the weekend, I'll use the DD. So, and sometimes if I'm late for work, I'll also take a DD like all the way from home straight to work, which is quite expensive. So. 1,500 for transportation I think is a really good generous budget if you like to cycle that's gonna chop that down in half if you live close to your job that's also gonna reduce the cost so it definitely depends on your lifestyle and where you're going next thing we're gonna talk about is food so food that's not inside your house is pretty yummy in China as a lot of you anticipate Especially if you eat meat and eggs and all of that stuff, you're you're even worse off than I am with how much you're gonna end up spending on food. For me, I am vegan, mostly vegan. Whatever comes into my home is vegan. For groceries each week, I spend 200 kwai. I use an app to order my groceries. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of going to the supermarket and like going home with my bags. Things are very convenient here. It's super easy, super affordable to just order and have everything delivered here. So each month that is is about 800 kwai on toiletries, fresh fruits and vegetables, canned goods, about 800 a month on groceries. Ordering out, this is where things add up. When life gets busy and there's a delicious meal for 20 kwai, you're gonna order it. <laughs> and that's gonna add up throughout the course of the month. I would say I order food every single day, sometimes two times or three times a day. So I'd say the total for food for a month would be 3,000 kwai, including groceries and ordering out. Now we're on to the next thing, entertainment. So entertainment is definitely going to be dependent on what floats your boat. What are you into? What do you like to do? And how frequently you like to do it. The main things you're going to have to consider on a night out are transportation, drinks, and food. I say transportation because the metro closes pretty early here in China. So you can get where you're going by metro, but to get home, if you're having a late night, you're going to have to take a DD. Drinks, I think, are your typical city price. Not, not your New York city price, not your LA price but you can get drinks I would say like these are like cocktails or wine or what else do people drink I don't really drink much but like cocktails and wine are around 50 70 90 to 100 kwai for each drink then for food if you're gonna have a meal you're gonna have snacks that's around 100 150 kwai depending on the restaurant you're at so for a night out in Shanghai, I would say it's gonna cost you around 500 kai on the lower end. There's a lot of other types of entertainment in the city apart from going out clubbing at night. I'm more of a museum, art gallery, um, exhibitions, installations kind of girl, and those tickets can also get pretty expensive. So now that we've been entertained, let's get on to our hobbies. I included hobbies because I feel like anyone who is gonna move to a new city is also gonna wanna continue doing the things they used to do in their old city. Doing hobbies here can add up. For me, the main things I pay for each month would be the gym. I'm actually pretty lucky. The gym that I go to, I paid 1,000 kwai for my entire year's membership 
and I've been doing that for the past four years with this gym. I also take dance classes. I do twerking. <laughs> I, I take some twerking classes and I'm gonna try to stop saying that with like an air of embarrassment because it's not, it's actually a very difficult workout. I paid um, 1,500 for 10 classes. So I don't know, I think that is a bit pricey. Back when we could travel, travel was also a huge hobby of mine. But the good thing is that if you're based in China and you're making a good enough salary, traveling around Asia is actually quite affordable. So once again, hobbies, travel, all of the fun stuff, really depends on what you're into and what your goals are. I would round out hobbies to 2,000 quiet a month, maybe even 1,000 quiet a month, maybe even nothing, depending on how hectic your life is and if you even have time for those extra things. All right, let's tally it up. Let's see what my total is each month. So our total is 15,000 RMB, which is around 2,300 American dollars. Uh, that is a little pricey, especially with my Jamaican mind, knowing what the actual conversion of that is and what I could get in Jamaica for that money. It is kind of a lot, but you're definitely, as a foreigner, gonna earn, a, you're gonna earn more than 15K each month, so it's honestly quite manageable. However, if you're trying to save, if you're here for a purpose and you got a goal and you wanna save and you wanna leave, you definitely have to be a lot more strict and a lot more cognizant of where you can save money and where you can kind of splurge. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a better idea of what you're gonna need to spend if you wanna live in Shanghai, China. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.